Come on, come on, refresh. Refresh, come on, refresh. Sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, I'm Jared. And Apple just finished up their Apple Unleashed event and they brought it. Like really, they brought it. They brought everything that we kind of have come to expect, but also, I mean, they just brought it. Like they brought everything that they had and shoved it all in these brand new MacBooks. There's a new design, new processors, new GPUs, new memory options, new keyboards, new displays, new mics, new speakers, new everything. And these are really, finally, the pro MacBooks, the pro laptops with Apple silicon chips that pros have been waiting for. And I mean, I'm not really a pro, I'm kind of pro, I'm kind of like part-time pro-ish, I guess. And I don't need as much power, most likely, as what these new laptops have because the M1s have been super good. And even my i7 iMac is still amazing. But I cannot wait to actually try these brand new PowerBooks, MacBooks, definitely MacBooks. So let's take a look at Apple's site and get our first look at these brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. All right, so if you've been waiting for a brand new MacBook, one of the things you've been waiting for is probably a slightly bigger display. So the 13 inch models now come with a 14 inch display and the 16 inch models still get, I guess, a 16 inch. And the chips are really the biggest thing in these new MacBooks, so let's save those for just a moment and let's start with the brand new displays. Both the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros get a brand new XDR display. They get up to 1000 nits of peak brightness and up to 1600 nits in HDR peak brightness, which is insane. That's on the same level as the iPad Pros and the Pro Display XDR. Yeah, that $5,000 display with that $1,000 aluminum stand. Same display quality and technology in these brand new MacBooks. These new displays are gonna let you view and actually edit, if you edit HDR content on the laptop with a real true HDR display with up to one million to one contrast ratio. You also get a billion colors now displayed on the new MacBook Pro displays and you get now 7.7 .7 million pixels on the 16 inch display and 5.9 pixels on the 14 two inch, 14.2 inch display which is just great. You also get 254 pixels per inch, which is a lot higher than the IMAX and the Pro Display XDR, which gets about 218 pixels per inch. Apple even went above and beyond on the brand new displays and added ProMotion for an adaptive up to 120 hertz display. And I kind of poo-pooed that on the iPhone 13 Pro review a couple of weeks ago. However, I do think that on the larger displays, it makes more sense. You're viewing more content on a larger display and when you're moving things around or scrolling up and down, you wanna be able to actually see what you're looking at. A little bit more so than I think on the iPhone 13. Apple did say that you can actually adjust the ProMotion display and actually set it to a fixed resolution rate if you need to, if you're having an issue editing videos or something like that. So I'll be curious about that and definitely wanna play with that. Overall, I think the display sounds amazing. I can't wait to get my eyeballs on it and check it out. I'm definitely getting the 14 inch. I haven't decided yet on the 16 inch, but definitely hit subscribe and you know all that jazz if you wanna see those upcoming videos on at least the new 14 inch MacBook Pro. All right, right above the display, there is a brand new 1080p camera and you actually get a notch and it's notch what I was expecting. Just like any display that I've used previously with a notch, I think that over time it's just going to fade away. It does look a little weird coming down here, but it's mostly gonna be just in the menu bar. If you play a video full screen, it's gonna have a wider aspect ratio than the built-in display. So I don't think that you're going to notice it on a normal basis. It is now 1080p, it gets up to twice as bright and it uses AI and the image signal processor on the brand new chips, which we'll get to, to give you a much clearer, more bright, vibrant photo or video when you're on a video call. There's also a brand new three array studio mic, which has a much lower noise floor and a brand new six speaker sound system, which is very much like the brand new 24 inch IMAX where they have two sets of noise canceling subwoofers on each side to boost up the bass and give you more low end without the case rattling around. That also allows for the new spatial audio to come to the MacBook Pro so that you can get that kind of three dimensional sound coming from the laptop itself, like it's coming from all around you. On the sides of the brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, we're also getting Pro ports brought back to the Mac. Yes, first of all, we get a brand new charging port, MagSafe 3. So MagSafe is finally brought back to the Macs. That I don't know why they ever took it away. It was an amazing genius port and I'm just glad that it's going to be back because somebody's walking around, somebody trips over your cable and the cord gets yanked right out of your computer without your computer going flying across the room. They removed MagSafe when they added USB-C to the laptops years ago and it just wasn't as good of a charging solution. So I'm really happy about MagSafe on the laptops. 
You get two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left side, so you should get that full 40 gigabit per second. You get a headphone jack, and then on the right side, you get an SD card slot because almost anybody who is a pro of some kind, whether that's photo or video or audio, they need an SD card slot. That makes no sense that they ever took that away, but it's back. You also get another Thunderbolt 4 port and HDMI port directly on the computer. So no adapters needed to plug into a projector at an office or just to plug into a single monitor. But you know what? You also get two external displays on the brand new base model 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And to talk about displays, we really have to get to the chips themselves. So let's start talking about the brand new M1 Pro and M1 Pro Max processors inside these new MacBook Pros. And they are, as Apple says, scary fast and scary faster. Both of these processors get up to 10 core CPUs, which means you get eight high performance CPUs and two efficiency CPUs, which is a lot more than the four high performance and four efficiency CPUs on the M1. On the M1 Pro, you get a 16 core GPU, which is double the eight core GPU on the M1. You get 32 gigabytes of memory, up to 32 gigabytes of memory, compared to the 16 gigabytes on the M1 and up to 200 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. On the M1 Max, you get the 10 core CPU with eight high performance cores. You get up to 32 cores of GPU. So you can actually get 16, 24, or 32 GPU cores. And you can get up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. That is memory that can be shared between the processor and the GPU, giving you a GPU with more memory than any other graphics card that you can get on the market in a laptop right now. Now it's gonna take some time to really dig in to these brand new processors, the M1 Pro and the M1 Pro Max, because we need to get them in hand. We need to do some benchmarks. We need to see how they actually perform. But I think I imagine that just like with the M1 chips, the expectations are gonna be much lower than the actual real world results. I think real world results are just going to knock our socks off with the performance of these chips. Now, like I said before, the base models with the M1 Pro can support up to two external displays with these laptops. So now, instead of just a single external display with your laptop, you get your built-in display and you get two additional external displays. And then if we look at the M1 Max, you can get up to four additional external displays. Apple said that you can add an additional three Pro Display XDRs and an additional 4K display to the M1 Pro Max based MacBook Pros, which is mind boggling. And that's only because they added these additional Thunderbolt 4 buses inside these chips. Now, when compared to the previous generation of the high-end 13 inch i7 MacBook Pro and the high-end eight core Intel i9 on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, you can see that these numbers look staggering in performance. They're showing between two and four times the performance in building out projects. They're showing up to 13 times better performance in rendering 4K video on the 14 inch model and up to three times faster rendering 8K video on the 16 inch model. And when you look at these crazy graphs that don't make a whole lot of sense because there's not a lot of information here, you can see that definitely the Apple Silicon chips outperform the dedicated and other brands by super high margins. And that's probably pretty accurate, but we don't yet know fully what these graphs are based off of. So wait for all of the reviews coming in to compare it against all of those big PCs and we'll see how this thing really stacks up. One of the great things about the Apple Silicon laptops is that when you disconnect it for power, they still get 100% of the power available from the CPU. So you don't lose any efficiencies or any power by disconnecting it from the cord. But because these are larger, more powerful laptops, we are losing a little bit of battery life compared to the 13 inch Pro with the M1. So the 13 inch Pro with M1 did get 17 hours of wireless web browsing versus the 11 hours in the new 14 inch and 14 hours in the new 16 inch. So we are going to lose some battery, like I said. So we are going to lose a little bit of battery life versus the M1 MacBook Pro, but you are getting a much better display and much more power. Now versus the M1 MacBook Pro, which is three pounds, the 14 inch is now 3.5 pounds and the 16 inch is 4.7 pounds. So not super heavy laptops, still under that five pounds, which is nice. So they still should be pretty portable, even with that 16 inch size. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to learn new skills, including topics on illustration, design, freelancing, filmmaking, and more. Skillshare is for lifelong learners and real working creatives made by other creatives. Millions of us are using these curated classes that are built to fit any schedule and skill level, and you can use the equipment that you already have today to build out your own YouTube channel with the help of MKBHD's new YouTube success class. Marquez does a great job of breaking down how he creates a video from idea and script to editing and growing your channel. 
I loved being able to compare his process to mine and start improving my workflows. I was able to learn new techniques for shooting my videos, including placement of microphones and lighting, and even how to construct a better script. If you want to check out Marquez's class, you can do that today, like right now, using the link below. And the first thousand of you will get a free one month trial to Skillshare Premium. And my thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So there's a lot going on with these brand new MacBooks and I can't wait to get mine, which should be Tuesday. So hit subscribe if you wanna see my unboxing and my initial tests on these new laptops. Well, at least the 14 inch model. Let me know below or hit me a thumbs up if you want me to get a 16 inch model as well to compare. All right, so the only other thing that we need to look at for this video is the price. And the 14 inch model now starts at $19.99. And I just wanna say that there's probably a lot of misconception about these new laptops. A lot of people were expecting for some reason that they would replace the existing M1s and they'd be able to get a brand new M1 Pro or M1 Max laptop with the same you know, $12.99 starting price of the 13 inch mini. And that is not the case. These are above and beyond. These are the high end models. So the 14 inch model is going to start at $19.99. And for that, you're going to get the eight core CPU, a 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage. But we could spec that up quite high. So again, the 14 inch will start with the M1 Pro with an eight core CPU and 14 core GPU. You can upgrade that to the 10 core CPU, or you can add that to the 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. Above that, you can go to the M1 Max and get that same 10 core CPU, but now you can get a 24 core GPU or a 32 core GPU with that guy. So let's go ahead and add that for $700, why not? And then with the M1 Pro Max, you have the option of 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of unified memory, $400, why not? For storage, we can go all the way up to eight terabytes for $2,400 for a total price of $5,899 for the 14 inch M1 Max Pro computer spec'd out, fully loaded. For the 16 inch MacBook Pros, they start off with the 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU M1 Pro for $24.99 with that big 16 inch display. And let's go ahead and see what else we can add to that. Looks like from there, we can go to the Apple M1 Max with 10 core CPU and 24 core GPU or 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU. So let's go ahead and add that. We can add again, 32 or 64 gigabytes of memory with the M1 Max, we'll add 64 gigabytes and we'll go all the way up to eight terabytes of storage for a grand total of $6,099 or for the very low price of all of your organs. Wow, okay, so <laughs> that's a lot. That is a lot of upgrades to the brand new MacBook Pros. New design, new display, new microphone, speakers, camera, two new chips, different memory options, GPU options, new keyboard without Touch ID, and oh my God, I cannot wait. So again, hit subscribe. I'll have the unboxing on Tuesday for you. So definitely check that out. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.